G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, I'm in the process of getting a few bits and pieces together for a, a video review coming up. Um, Banggood have got onto me and asked me to review some stuff for them. Apparently Banggood have got onto a lot of people, uh, as have uh, um, Alibaba and Amazon, to review stuff. There seems to be a, a review war going on between the big sellers and uh, it's a good opportunity for little channels like me to pick up stuff to review which otherwise wouldn't be well it wouldn't be economic I suppose you could say and uh, it's a good chance for you the viewers to see reviews on stuff which aren't very common you know if you look at reviews on carbide inserts very few out there you know TCMT style, not much at all. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll be reviewing uh, an absolute dirt cheap carbide insert for TCMT from Banggood. These these inserts are like a dollar fifty each. I mean that's that's dirt dirt cheap. Even I, uh, the biggest scrooge on the planet, um, generally don't go below three dollars on an insert. So you know, three's about baseline for me. So, how a dollar fifty one's going to go is going to be very interesting. Anyway, what's happening here? Well, I've got a few items together that I'm going to run the, the Banggood insert over. Uh, it, it's just a general purpose insert. And getting, getting it together, I was using some of these Corloy uh, inserts, which is what I'll be comparing the Banggood inserts to. These are Good value, these are good insert. Uh, generally these go for sort of three dollars to six bucks each. You might even get it cheaper if you hunt around. They sell them on eBay and Amazon, they're all over the place. They are a good insert, you know, very good for the money. And uh, these are uh, what you call a general purpose insert. These are, um, the model on these is, uh, where is it, 16, uh, 16T, 304 C25. Now these are basically, that's the designation you generally get uh, on a lot of these sites. So the, you classify these as medium GP, uh, which is medium r light roughing uh, to medium finishing. There's three flavours of TCMT inserts basically, even though they all look the same, there's three flavours. It's basically roughing, um, medium which is the ones we got here and finishing now they might all look the same you know but they're not the same they have different chip breakers different uh, relief angles different nose radiuses so you know if you're the sort of person that's out to get the absolute best finish from or performance from your uh, carbide cutters you should be buying the one which is absolutely the perfect match to to the job you're doing. Me, I don't work that way. I generally just run general purpose ones and then finish off with a sheer tool, high speed steel. You know, these will do interrupted cuts. I mean, I used these to do this, get this prepared so I can center it, and yeah, it, it did a quite a good job. It handled this. You know, if you treat these carbide uh, tips with respect. Yeah, they'll handle interrupted cuts, no worries, you know. Anyway, what am I coming to? Well, while I was doing the, getting this together and doing this, I thought, well, you know, maybe I'll just run the call always over some of this stuff and you can have a bit of a look and see how the call, call always go. And, uh, yeah, it's just an opportunity to do a, a quick, sharp review and... Uh, yeah, you might be interested in getting some from somewhere at some stage. I think they're quite good. It's uh, worth looking at this chart that I got off of the internet to show you why TCMTs are a good cutter for small to medium lathes. If you look at this chart, it shows you the nose angle, basically, which is the shape, related to the shape, and it shows you the, the trade-off uh, when you go to a broad cutting area, a big cutting area, 
you're going to get a lot of lot more vibration. So everything to the left of this chart of these shapes is going to get the most more more chatter. Further to the right will be less chatter, and it's all relative to the to the angle of the of the uh, of the cutter, and uh, of course the nose radius will vary it as well. So uh, finer a nose radius, less chatter. Uh, wider, bigger diameter nose radius, more chatter. This is why I often get people, you know, newbies, they have trouble oh, with chatter, like, oh, I've got all these problems. A lot of it's to do with the fact that they've got a too big a nose radius or that they're using the wrong style uh, cutter, particularly in carbide. Okay, so that way is bad for vibration, this way is good for vibration. This way lets you turn contours. Now I've I've used uh, a lot of these 35 degree chips. <clears throat> They're very good. If you're doing, say, V pulleys, you can get right into the V, no problem whatsoever. Do both sides, just profile it. They're profiling uh, tip, really. I haven't used the 55 degrees. They probably do a pulley, I think. I mean, you might get it in, I'm not sure on that. But certainly, this is the TCMT that I use. They're positive rake. And but once again, that also puts less load on your lathe. So, yeah, this is where you should be. Spindle power, yeah. The further to the left, uh, the harder the lathe is going to work. Broader cutting surface, and quite often these chips have got negative rate, so big load. Strength of the insert, once again, that goes with the uh, the shape. Bigger cutting area, more load bearing surface. Once again, a lot of these are negative rate, and negative rate will take a pounding. You can get these in a negative rate. I've got some, and uh, you know, if you want to do some roughing up on or going into um, you know hardened material, these can be quite good in a negative rate. But positive is really what you should use for a small lathe. And once again, ability to take heavy cuts, strength of the insert, all over that way. Further get to the right. Uh, the less heavy it's going to be but you see once again with a small lay that hasn't got the structural strength to do those big heavy cuts so it's incidental you'd be crazy to use these these particular inserts get over the right here all of these will be perfectly suitable from about here across you could use those I suppose but definitely all this stuff here perfect all right well let's go and spin up some metal with these uh, colloids and just see how they yeah, how they go. Right, so we'll just run this thing through some good quality steel. Uh, if you're going to test these, you can also test it with good stuff. Uh, this is some steel that came out of a treadmill roller, drive roller. As you can see, it's machined up beautifully. So we'll come in and we'll uh, we'll try our cutter on that. I'll put it on the uh, medium feed first looks pretty nice pretty good yep I'd be happy with that all right we'll go to medium feed uh, to fine feed now the chip breaker didn't break it up as well as it could have but uh, depends on the on the material if you're using uh, a softer metal I mean this is basically 1080 grade uh, machinable steel. If you were to use a, uh, a softer metal, I think the chip breaker would work better. But uh, anyway, the finish is good. And now we're on fine feed.
once again, the chip breaker could do a better job, but I think this, this is to do with the steel we're machining. We'll try it on some other steel after. So that's a beautiful mirror finish. Really good. Okay, we'll take that out and we'll, we'll try something else. Once again, this is, this is not a finishing, a specifically a finishing uh, cutter. It's just a medium, but the, the finish is pretty damn good. All right, let's try some medium grade mild steel. So we'll start off on a medium feed again. Chip bag is working better now. Hmm, that's about what you'd expect to get on your mild steel. Now we go to the fine finish, finishing speed. What a difference. That's that's pretty good. For mild steel. That's not too bad. I'd be happy with that. Now I am not a great fan of machining aluminium with carbide. Uh, I'd much rather use high speed steel. But for the sake of exercise we will run this uh, tip over it. They say you can use it for carbide uh, for aluminium. But we will, instead of running it dry, we'll put some uh, uh, petrol, uh, some uh, kero engine oil lube on it to stop galling, because that's the big killer with uh, with carbide. Well, any cutter, it will gall very easily. So let's see how we go. Okay, we'll go onto medium first. I'm not doing coarse because it's uh, this is about you know general machining. If you want to just r rough up, we can rough up with anything. So. Four sixty five RPM. All these tests have been done at. Put on a fine finish. Too bad, I suppose. Fair. I mean, about what you expect 
with a carbide. We'll try it again. We'll do it dry this time. I really don't like using carbide wet because it's too inconsistent. Much more consistent dry. Hmm. Not bad. This is his home brew stuff, you know. But uh yeah. quite reasonable. Okay, we'll do this roughing up pass with our high quality steel at 1080 grade. Let's see how she goes. bad, eh? Cool bananas. That's pretty good. Right, well, what more can I say? They're good little cutters, you know, good tips. And, uh, for, you know, three bucks each roughly, I'm pretty sure that's what I paid. Uh, yeah, they represent good value and I certainly do the sort of work that most hobbyists want to do and uh, won't cost you an arm and a leg. All right, well, that's it from me. Um, next video coming up will be the Banggood dollar fifty carbide cutters, which basically have the same specification as this cutter. They're the same uh, number and uh, same type. So until then, uh, yep. See you next time. Cheers.